Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. And uh, I had an interesting package come in the mail this week uh, from a gentleman in Segovia, Spain, named Jorge Otero. And he is a artist a, and a pioneer in lumen photography, lumen prints, and using uh, lumen print technology to make uh, still life and landscape and portrait kind of photographs. So I thought I would share with you what he sent me in the mail. Stay tuned. I've shared with you in previous videos a little bit about lumen print photography. But for those of you who are unfamiliar with this, it is the ability of a black and white silver gelatin paper to change color and show some kind of a tonal rendition strictly from exposure to light without any subsequent chemical development. Now, lumen prints have been made for years by artists and photographers with pinhole cameras where they will set up a pinhole camera outdoors looking at the sky with a piece of photo paper in it and they'll leave the camera outside for weeks or months at a time and the path of the sun running across the sky as, the, as it changes will create streaks of light on the photo paper. It'll create a long-term exposure on the paper itself strictly by the action of the light. That's probably the most common uh, type of lumen print that people have seen. But Mr. Otero has been pioneering the use of lumen prints in cameras to make images uh, a lot quicker than what you could do with a pinhole over a period of weeks or months. And so, first of all, let's talk a little bit about this lumen print, this color change. When I uh, am in the darkroom and I'm cutting strips of photo paper, uh, I usually start with 8x10 sheets of paper and I'll cut them either into 4x5s or some other size and I often have little trimmings from the paper and I usually set those little strips of paper off to the side on my, on my working table in the darkroom and I just let them sit there for a long time. I don't do anything with them and they get exposed to light as I open the door to the, uh, of the darkroom and I have the regular white lights running. But let me just show you a variety of color changes that can happen with a silver gelatin black and white paper strictly due to the action of light itself. Now, black and white paper is not supposed to create color images as we all probably know, but look at this spectrum of color available from silver gelatin black and white paper. You get this, these blues and you have a kind of pinkish and even purple colors. Uh, there's some more blue in there. Sometimes it gets dark purplish, almost a brownish tone like this. These over here are almost like a brownish, uh, kind of a sepia or something. Interesting. And, and you can see how maybe they get spots of water on them or there's one, one piece that masks the other piece and you'll get little edges like that showing. It's kind of fun to, uh, to see this happen over a period of time. But what Mr. Otero has been working with is uh, using this phenomenon to actually create an image on the silver gelatin paper. Now, inspired by Jorge Otero's work, I've made a makeshift little lumen camera out of an old large format lens and a little box. I might have shown you that on a previous video. And I make these little black uh, sleeves out of black craft paper that I can store my exposed lumen prints in. It's uh, folded down, taped shut, and I have a label on the envelope that describes for me uh, what uh, prints are in there, the exposure time, the subject matter, the date, etc. And so I can keep these now in my archives and I won't have to worry about the image fading away because, of course, if you have a, a, a recognizable image of light and dark tones and if you continue to expose the paper to light all of that is going to fade away and it'll turn as dark of color as it can over a period of time and you'll lose the image. So this is one of the interesting things about lumen prints is that they are fragile, they're delicate, they are light sensitive and I don't know of any really good way to permanently fix lumen print so that the image stays 
present with the colors it has. Um, if you use regular photographic fixer, it'll generally take off all of the image because fixer works against undeveloped uh, silver halides, which is what is on the paper. That's what's actually changing color. Well, if you haven't seen my earlier videos on lumen box photography, you might be asking yourself, well, how can you do anything with these uh, faint images if they're so fragile, if they fade away when you expose them to light? Well, the idea with lumen photography here is it's kind of a hybrid process. After you expose adequately the uh, photo paper in the box with the lens, and it produces an image, and we're talking in bright sunlight, anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes or more, to pay based on the intensity of the light, etc., and how big your aperture is, how fast your lens is, and how fast the paper is, and various photo papers have various speeds. But anyway, after you uh, get the paper exposed and there's a faint image on it, the idea is to go and scan or photograph that negative image, I should say, as fast as you can or as soon as you can, and then store it away in a light tight container. Then you have a digital file that's a negative image. It'll have the original colors that you see on the uh, lumen uh, negative, just like you would with these example strips of paper, for instance. But to get a positive image, an actual working image, a photographic image that's positive, you're going to want to, in post-processing like Photoshop or a similar program, you're going to want to invert the tones, creating a positive image. And so it is a hybrid photographic process. It uses this interesting uh, lumen exposure method with these simple cameras, and then you post-process the resulting scanned negative to get your positive image. Uh, the other thing about this is because the paper is being auto-developed, uh, it's ex developing itself, if you will, just a changing color due to the action of light upon the silver halides, you don't have to protect the paper from stray light to the same degree that you would with if you were doing paper negatives that were going to be developed in chemical developers. So you could out in the daytime, you could open up the pouch in, in shaded light, take a piece of photo paper out, load it in the camera, you know, under a tree or whatever, right outside in, in the sunlight, just do it real fast and not don't expose it to direct light as much as you can avoid. And then you can start your next exposure going. So uh, Mr. Otero had created a, a, a camera called a Lumen Box. And his first prototype of the Lumen Box that is on uh, his website's are a little wooden boxes with a little simple lens, but he has a new system out now, and he shipped me uh, one of these cameras for me to try. In the envelope is a big sleeve of paper, and in that sleeve of paper is a kit for making my own Lumen Box camera, and it's basically made from multiple layers of black paper, like a black kind of craft paper that's already been cut, die cut, I guess, and also in the kit, the lens and a pack of silver gelatin paper. And I'm not really certain what kind of paper he's included in the package, and it'll be fun to try it out. So I was going to uh, take this kit, open it up, and start assembling it, but it didn't have any printed instructions. And according to the email he sent me, he was still in the process of getting the instructions all put together. And he sent me a link uh, today. And so what he's done is he's made a presentation on YouTube how to put together this kit. And I will uh, include a link down below to the instructions. So what I'm going to do here, as I was thinking about doing this as a time lapse, showing me putting it together, but it might be really boring because I haven't ever done this before, and I might end up with uh, a lot of time delays and figuring things out if I'm not getting it right. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stop the camera and put this together, and then I'll show you what I got. It assembles with a glue stick. That's really all you need is a glue stick and follow the instructions on the video. And the result is this. This is the little Lumen Box camera. Let me show you its features. This is a sliding shutter and it slides down out of the way to reveal the lens. It is a plastic lens, it's a biconvex lens. And let me pull the shutter out to show you. So 
it is a box inside of a box and it has these two little thumb grips. Notice the Lumen Box logo, which is kind of cool. Okay, so the back of the box is, uh, of course, made of multiple layers of black paper. And we'll set that aside. The main chamber of the camera, on the front, you have an aperture. It comes with two of these aperture discs. And I thought when I was reading or watching the video that I thought it was two different size apertures, a fast and a slow, but it's actually two exactly the same size holes. And so what I think, how I think it works is the fast aperture is without a, a, an aperture uh, piece in it. It's just the full lens is open. And then the slower speed, which is going to give you probably more sharpness, is when you have one of these in it. But both holes appear to be the same size to me. So uh, I think that's the way it works. And I'll report back uh, later uh, on my results. Now, as far as loading the paper, the photo paper comes in a little pouch like that. And I don't know ex the exact size of it. I'll have to measure them. But basically, you have these two little ledges in here. There's one here and there's one on the other side here. And the paper curves. It goes in bent, so it curves like that. So it's a slightly curved film plane, which is a good idea when you're using a single element meniscus lens. So you load the piece of paper in there and I think it helps to load the aperture before you close the before you close the, the uh, box up. So you put the aperture in there and then you fold the tab down on the top of the aperture like that and then close the camera up like that. And then you slip the shutter, which is just a folded piece of cardstock like that. There's your shutter right over the lens. You set the camera up wherever you want it and then simply slide it down to start your exposure and slide it back up to stop the exposure. And you might be wondering uh, how accurate of a focal uh, plane and how accurate of a focus can you get with this camera based on the idea that it's just made of paper and the, the paper has a curved film plane in here. Well, let me show you. I just did a little experiment. I took a piece of translucent paper. This is actually parchment paper from the kitchen. It, you could use wax paper. It would work just the same. But I'm just going to... It's not really exactly the same length as the photo paper he has in the package, but it's close enough. So I'm going to fit it in there like the way it would be setting against those two guides. And hey, look at that. It looks pretty darn focused to me. Pretty close. And with one of the aperture stops put in place, it gets a little fainter, but yeah, it's actually uh, pretty sharp. It gets even more sharp. So look at that. That light bulb there it looks pretty sharp, I think. So that promises to be a pretty good uh, focusing method, and it looks like it has a pretty good off-axis uh, sharpness for the, having a curved film plane. Now, making this camera was fairly intricate, I would say. You have to be a little bit skilled at paper craft. And when you're all done with it, you're going to have some scrap cardstock. So this is constructed real well. I just wanted to point out that the parts that are all on here are all die cut so that the, the edges that need to be cut are already cut out and they're hanging by little chads. And the ones that need to be folded, the edges and corners that need to be folded are already scored, so they already fold. Um, one caveat here is there are two parts that have been specifically cut slightly smaller than the opening in the window of the, of the template. And the, he has affixed those with uh, artist's masking tape. So the one piece is the shutter thing, and the other one is one of the other pieces, uh, I believe, for the lens assembly. But So just be, be aware that those are being held in place by masking tape, and you want to peel the masking tape off real slowly and gently so you don't tear the paper. Okay, so I said earlier that glue stick is what you want to use. I had a big, fat, permanent glue stick is what I used. So a few tips about working with glue sticks here. 
you need a big surface that you don't mind getting some glue on. So what I use is the big white shipping envelope that this whole kit came to me in. I open it up and I use the inside of that as my work surface. So that worked pretty well. And besides the glue stick, I happen to have one of these bone folding tools. This is for folding and creasing paper. And I found that where this was handy was in places like reaching down in the corners to, to get all the paper pressed down tightly. This back lid is folded and glued from one piece of paper, folded in, in different parts, glued together and fold up. And then there's two rectangles of paper that have to be glued together and then the bottom of them glued and stuck into the bottom here to reinforce it. And that's why I like to use the bone folding tool to get those corners down in here. The body of the camera itself is essentially folded the same way. Um, and it has an inner box that's also made of black paper. Now, I'd say the most intricate part of the whole construction of this is the front of the inner box that holds the lens. You could call it the lens board. It uses six layers of cardstock, and all six pieces have holes in them, but there are three different size holes. So four of those cardstocks have the biggest hole. And then the smallest hole is glued to the front of it, and that's glued down in the box. So you can see the front small hole, black little ring there. The lens is a biconvex lens, and the larger curve is placed inside the box, and the lens actually gets glued along the inside of that inner uh, hole. And then there is the sixth piece has a medium-sized hole and it gets glued down and that actually holds the lens in place between all those layers of cardstock. So that holds the lens into place. The intricate thing about working with this is you're going to get glue stick stuff on your fingers. And there's going to be a, a time when you're going to start to touch this lens. This is a plastic lens. So I have a microfiber cleaning cloth and I really had to work at keeping the lens clean while I was touching it with gluey fingers because you don't want to get gluey marks stuck onto the lens because that might uh, cause some problems with the optical quality of it. But I had no problem putting it together like that. Everything looks like it worked pretty well as uh, indicated. I would say the gluing together the six layers of paper with the lens in there is probably the most intricate uh, part of it. And all the other little score lines or scratch lines you might see in the box, that's just me using the bone folding tool trying to get all those layers, make sure they stay glued down tightly. So, hey, it went together pretty good. I look forward to using it. It's really well designed. I really like his graphic design of the camera. It's really cool. And I look forward to taking it out and trying it out. Uh, I don't have uh, the ac access to a, a scene right now to, to photograph because it's dark outside. And uh, so I'm going to try it outdoors in the next uh, week, days or week. And I'll report back to you on my progress. But this is the Lumen Box from Jorge Otero from Spain. And I really enjoy putting it together. And I look forward to seeing the results. So I'll report back again on, an, on a future video about uh, how what kind of pictures I get with this. And if you're interested in acquiring one of these little Lumen Box kits for yourself, I'll leave a link down below in the description for his Etsy shop. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve. And this has been a video about Lumen Prints and Jorge Otero's Lumen Box project. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.